Welcome to the first of a series of videos thinking about cyber psychology. My name is Ian Wells and I'm a senior lecturer here in the Department of Psychological Sciences at UEL. So this time round, we're going to look at the idea of screen time. Is the use of the internet and internet connected devices impacting children? And I think we all know that if you get if you have a conversation with any group of parents fairly rapidly, you'll get to discussions about how much time should kids have access to screens for. Um, and this has been a long running discussion in the literature on cyber psychology. And I want to start getting you to think about what, what, we, what we know about this and what we already know. And one of the first things I'd encourage you to do is just think about, even before we get to looking at what the literature says, is actually, what do we already know about what people think about technology? And one of the things we can do is to look back through older technological innovations and see if they've actually had a change. So that's what we're going to do. Just have a look through this time round, through previous technological innovations and what's been said about those. So let's start off with the thing that we're now all used to, email. We're all used to getting emails on our computers, on our phones. But if we go back to, in this case, this is CNN reporting this back in 2005. Um, and what are they saying? Emails hurt IQ more than pop. Well, much as we've all probably complained about getting too many emails, there really isn't any evidence for that at all. Um, and if we start working our way back even further, you see similar sentiments being um, put around in the media. So if you go back to the age of radio, so even, even before television, what were people saying about the advent of radio? Um, so this is 1936. Children have developed the habit of dividing attention between the humdrum preparation of their school assignments and the compelling excitement of the loudspeaker. So even in 1936, radio was going to impact children. And we can go back even further than that. So if you go back to the 1920s, and the first time you see crossword puzzles appearing in newspapers, what was being said about crossword puzzles then? Um, well, this is about crosswords, have grown from the pastime of a few idlers into a national institution, a menace because it is making devastating inroads on the working hours of every rank of society. So even crosswords back in the 1920s were having an impact on people. Um, go back a bit further um, to the sort of 1880s and the advent of mass education. And what were people saying about all kids being educated, being sent to school? Um, well, this was going to exhaust children's brains and nervous systems with complex and multiple studies and ruin their bodies by protracted imprisonment in schools. So in 1880, people were saying kids going to school might be a problem for them. And you can track these sentiments right back through history. So let's go back to some fairly ancient history. The invention of the printing press and suddenly information could be made much more widely available than it ever was before. And what were people saying about that? Well, the modern world overwhelmed people with data and this overabundance was both confusing and harmful to the mind. Now, that was a quote from 1565, but you might recognise that sentiment as being uttered quite often nowadays because of the constant bombardment of information we get from our phones from, and from the internet in general. Um, and amazingly, even if you go back into ancient history, um, this is going back to 300 BC-ish and the advent of people starting to write down things that they knew. Um, and this is a quote from Socrates, the famous ancient Greek philosopher, talking about writing. For this invention will produce forgetfulness in the minds of those who learn to use it. 
because they will not practice their memory. Their trust in writing produced by external characters which are not part of themselves will discourage the use of their own memory within them. So here we've got, what are we talking about? 2,000 years ago, um, bemoaning this new technology writing that's going to undermine people's memories. Um, all the way through radio, um, printing, all the way up to email, people being worried about new technologies and how they're going to impact people. So um, <coughs> what's going on here? Well, actually, this is something that academics have studied since back in the 1970s. And it's something that's called the idea of a moral panic, um, particularly in association with technological change. But you do see it in other areas as well, that suddenly society seems to panic about some new development for a period. And then after that, things calm down a bit. Um, now, it's important that none of this is to say that actually, you know, using screens and the internet for young people, for children and young people, might have impacts on them. But when we're thinking about it, we need to, th we need to take into account that actually this long history of moral panics exists. And so we need to have a sort of calm reflection about what the literature actually says um, before coming to any conclusions. And so what we're going to do in the next episode of this series is look at what the literature actually says about the potential impact of screen time on children.